God, you're good. I thank you that you're really, really, really good. God, I thank you that your love for us is uncomparable. That your love for us is unstoppable and it'll never die. God, I thank you that no matter how far we go, your love will never stop pursuing us. Jesus, I love you so much tonight. I thank you for each each and every one of your sons and daughters in this place. God, I pray that my eyes will be your eyes, my words will be your words. God, I pray that I only see sons and daughters and I don't see anything outside of what you see, Jesus. God, I give you complete control of this service tonight. Holy Spirit, come. Come through each and every one of us. I pray that we could all release Jesus right now. That we could release him to be who he died to be. I thank you that we can all be what you called us to be, Jesus. And that's just like you. God, I thank you for the truth that will be revealed tonight. God, I thank you that minds will be open, and hearts will be open, your sword will come in and cut like a knife and separate all things that need to be separated, Jesus. I love you so much, Jesus. God's good. God's like really, 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 really good. Ooh, he's good. He's good. Sometimes man, man's words can do nothing. I feel like we're at a place where Jesus has come and he's like wrapping his arms around each and every one of us. And I don't want to interrupt anything he would ever do. If you would just close your eyes, please, and just, just let him love you. Let him love you. Right now, I, I command belief to rise up. Jesus, I thank you that you will place belief in each and every person in this room. God, I thank you that we can believe everything that you say about us, everything that you say about you, Jesus. I thank you that we can believe that tonight, God. God, I thank you tonight there will be no more delay, that we will live and be who you called us to be, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. 
Yes, Lord. Jesus, you are good. Jesus, you are so good. I thank you that this body will be a body that represents you, Jesus. That this body will represent you in the most pure form, God. I thank you that tonight, every single person in this room will step into their life in Christ. Jesus, I thank you for a bunch of light bulbs in here, God. I thank you for a bunch of lights that will shine bright on top of the hill. God, I thank you that tonight the baskets are removed from our heads. Jesus, I thank you that tonight salt is being restored back to salt, that this body won't be tasteless any longer, Jesus. God, I thank you that your word is going to cut like a knife tonight, Jesus. I thank you that you're going to separate me from you, Jesus, that my old man will die tonight, Jesus, and you will just live. God, I thank you that people will be unrecognizable the next time they look in the mirror, Jesus. God, I thank you the next time I look in the mirror, all I see is your face, Jesus. God, I thank you for a people that mends broken hearts, that brings healing to the sick, that raises dead men up. God, I thank you for a people that lives your gospel. Jesus, we don't preach it, but we live it, God. God, I thank you for a 1 Corinthians 4.20 church, Jesus, that we can, uh, we don't have to talk about your kingdom, but your kingdom just just is around us, that we are your kingdom, that power would come through us everywhere, Jesus. I thank you that excuses will die tonight, Jesus, that I'll never make an excuse why I couldn't witness or why I couldn't live like you. I, I, won't, I won't even make an excuse from the word like, oh, I just, I, I'm stuck in Romans 7. God, I thank you that you'll reveal Romans 7 to these people tonight, Jesus. That it'll be your word that comes to life, God. That we won't be wishy-washy, but we'll be whole in your name, God. Jesus, I thank you that we represent you the way you died for us to represent you, God. I thank you we will represent you to the world the way you presented to yourself 2,000 years ago, God. Jesus, come now. Come now, Jesus. I can say nothing, but your power is everything, God. ready I think he's ready I'm gonna ask for forgiveness before I even start I've got a lot in me so just hold on this is gonna be a wild roller coaster but God will reveal it all to you as we go okay okay you're with me you promise Okay, before I get started, who knows God's good? Come here. Come here. Yeah, come here. You'll be all right. It's not you. It's not you that lives. It's Jesus. Um, I brought Bob and Lena up here to uh, show you how good God is. Like, I don't just want to talk about the gospel. I want you guys to see the gospel. And he shows it in many, many ways. Like, I don't even have to tell you what's going on here, right? Like, this has been one week of what? Bliss. Relief. Relief. I mean, the joy. 
I mean, I never had, I lost, I've been in business for a long time, you know, like everybody, and I lost it. And, you know, I had old preacher talk, but he preached on snot. And I know that sounds funny, but that's where everybody needs to get back down to is crying and worshiping him. And that's not the snot roll, you know, just get down in your heart, you know. So... That's Jesus. If y'all don't know who Jesus is, he's in her. And he's like making her new. And it's good. And my brother Bob here, he's making him new. Every day he texts me, close to every day, and tells me how awesome God is. About dirt. Ask Bob, he'll explain to you. Anyways. I want you guys to watch what God does in this marriage. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Thank you. I know everybody deals with it from time to time, but it really got a hold of me, and that's depression. And that is a very, very real lie from the devil. Do not listen to it. You don't have to. You do not have to. I'm pretty sure I'm looking at a church full of saved people. So God told me something about three weeks ago. He told me, Josh, if somebody tells you, a, tells you they are a Christian, it's safe to assume they're just like me. Now think about how freeing that is. Who's ever been hurt by a Christian in here? Yep. So... If I would have the mindset that Mark is just like Jesus, then going into it, I won't ever expect Mark to hurt me. Y'all see what I'm saying there? So I would look at all Christians like they are just like Jesus. And in me doing that, when they look at me, they have to stare truth in the face. Because when they try to talk outside of Jesus, I'm going to say, wait a second, didn't you say that you were saved? Because if you're saved, then you shouldn't look anything like your old man. If you've ever heard me preach, I'm going to preach the same exact thing just in a different way. Because that's all I got. And I'm going to preach it until I see it. The Jesus you know is the Jesus you show. Ain't that right, Mark? If you don't get anything, get that. The Jesus you know is the Jesus you show. So if I'm running around act in one way, that's because I'm not seeking my father in that way. Okay, so I'm going to go through this thing called the Bible. It's a book I can't get out of. I've been stuck in it for about two years now, and it's, it just messes me up. Just messes me up. I want, I'm going to call you guys to a higher standard tonight. Is that okay? Like, there's no excuse for you not to look like Jesus. Now that scares some people because that means that I can't act like me. But if you got saved, what you said when you got saved was, I don't like the way my life is, I want something new. So what that tells me, y'all catching me? Y'all with me? So anytime I try to act outside of Jesus, that's who? The old man. That's not okay. It's not okay. Like, because when we do that, then that's when we get into a Romans 7 life. I do the things I don't want to do, and I don't do the things I do want to do. Yeah, that's not safe. Don't use that as an excuse. Why would we say, well, the Bible says, well, Paul says, I don't care. I mean, I do care what Paul says because he's an awesome man, but what I care about most is what Jesus said. Like, Jesus never said, I do the things I don't want to do, and I don't do the things I do want to do. No, Jesus said, I behold my Father, and I only do what I see him do, and I only say what I hear him say. You're called to the same thing. No excuses. Like there's no, but they did this to me. I don't care what they did to you. They hung Jesus on a cross. They spit in his face. Okay, y'all with me? And I say all that so we can represent him in the most pure form. Who, who can tell me any church right now that's representing Jesus the exact way he presented himself? Exactly, nobody. 
and that's not okay. It's not okay that the church doesn't look like the one they're supposed to represent. <laughs> right? That's not cool. But this isn't bad news. This is good news. That means you haven't made it yet. That means I get a chance to make it. And what empowers me to make it? Jesus. Check this out. This is Jesus speaking. You are the salt of the earth. Um, sorry, I'm Matthew 5, 13. I'd like to give a shout out to my piano player. He's really good. Really, really good. Jeremiah Grubb, if you guys want to get that album. Um, Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt would become tasteless, in what way will it become salt again? It is no longer still good except to be thrown outside to be trampled by men. <laughs> Do you guys see what I see there? <laughs> That's so crazy. And then he goes further to say, You are the light of the world. A city laid out on a mountain is not able to be hidden. And they do not light a lamp and place it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light for all those in the house. Your light must now shine like this before, what? All, all men, even the ones that make me mad, even the ones that hurt me. Okay. That's easy to say, right? So that they would see your good deeds and they would glorify your father, the one in the heavens. Okay, that's where we're going to get to tonight. Who would agree with me and say that you're not very salty? Who would agree with me in saying that as of right now, you may be a basket-headed Christian? Basket-headed Christian. That means you're a light and you put a basket over your head so nobody could see you. Like you go into the gas station and somebody says, aren't you a Christian? And you're like, eh, uh, yeah, yeah. I just need a soda. That's all I need. Or, I'm not going to go there. No, you ain't ready for that. You ain't ready for that. But you will be by the end of this. Because like God told me tonight while I was praying, he said he's going to take us from Daniel to Revelation. Do you guys remember what happened in Daniel? When Daniel was praying and what happened? His request got held up. But in Revelation, guess what it says? There'll be no more delay. It's coming. It's coming in tonight. Like, I'm, I'm so urgent to see us represent Jesus at all cost. Like, guys, I'm really in this to look like him. I'm not in this for any other reason. I'm not in it so you can pat me on my back. I'm not in it so I can make lots of money. I'm in it for him. Whether I ever stand up here again, whether I ever pray for another person, I'm in it for him. Like, no matter what. At all cost. Even to the cost of the ones closest to me hurting me the most. Like, guess what? I don't care. Jesus didn't hurt me. You're not going to hurt me. Like, I don't, I'm not going to care. I care about you, but you're not going to hurt me. Who agrees with that? Who is living that? See, that's where we're going to get tonight. Like, and it can happen like that. I've got scripture to back it up. Anybody ever heard of Saul? Hear of her. Must be in St. Louis. Hear of Saul? What happened? Instantly. Like there was no, yeah, I'm going through some stuff. Yeah, I am going through stuff and I'm shining my light the whole way through it. You with me? Okay. So how do we get there? Colossians 3. If I could only have one page of the Bible, it'd be this. This page right here. Because it's crazy good. Y'all there? Whew. I can't hear him. Here we go. If therefore... Okay, now you guys already told on yourself. Because who's saved in here? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's saved, right, okay. If not, I'm going to give you the opportunity at the end to come to know this awesome Jesus that's like in me. This is what's crazy. He's in me, then he put me in him, and then he got in God. 
understand that. You're not going to. But it's okay because he says, I don't have to. Just rest in him. Oh, he's so easy. So easy. All right, here we go. If therefore you are raised together with the Messiah, Jesus, you are seeking the higher things. That says you are. Like there's no, there's no wishy-washy. There's no, well, I seek the higher things on Sunday and Wednesday and sometimes on Friday. You are seeking the higher things. When does that mean you're seeking the higher things? Every single second. See, if I seek the high things at all times, will the low things ever bring me low? No, can't, can't. If I behold him, you guys good? We're rolling, right? You're seeking the higher things where the Messiah is seated at the right hand of God. You must continually have in mind the higher things, not the things upon the earth. Somebody give me a couple example. A couple people give me examples of stuff that's on the earth. Money, jobs. Electronics, houses, kids, bills, anger, depression, sadness, um, addiction. <laughs> Who? Bondage. Check this out. You must continually have in mind the higher things. What's, what's the higher things? Sum it all up in one word. Jesus. What's in Jesus? We'll find out. <laughs> For you died. Now let me ask you this. If I was to walk up and tell a dead man that he was no good piece of junk, how would he feel? Dead. He wouldn't even hear me. Why? Because he's dead. Okay? Did y'all catch that? So when you die, when somebody tries to hurt or offend you, what happens? You shine light on it. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. For you died and your life has been hidden. This is what I was talking Check this out. Listen. And your life has been hidden with Messiah in God. Okay. So who finds it hard when you're faced with a why at choosing life or flesh or death? I like to say flesh because what's flesh lead to? Death. When you're choosing life and flesh, who finds that why hard in some situations? So check this out. Watch what God did here. For I died, so I'm dead, but there's times where I have to choose life and flesh. Yes? Y'all agree? My life has been hidden with Jesus in God. So I'm with Jesus in God. So any time that I feel flesh rising up, I remember, because my mind is where? On the higher things, that I'm with Jesus in God. So, Scott, if you ever want to hurt me, you're going to have to hurt Jesus first, then God, then you'll find me. By the time you get to me, you're going to be so saved, you ain't even going to want to hurt me. <laughs> That's good. Somebody get that. That's really good. That's really, really good. I'm hidden with Jesus in God. I like to call it I'm doubly hidden. You're going to have to do some searching if you want to find me. By the time your search is over, you don't want me. You want him. Really good. Okay, here we go. This is where things get tough, okay? You guys okay with tough? Tough is where you grow, right? Like if I don't ever hit the gym or my muscles going to get big. No. Tonight we're going to hit the spiritual gym. You guys are going to grow because that's what Jesus wants you to do. He wants you to be just like him, just like him. No excuses, none at all. And don't you want to be? At all cost, no matter what. Okay. Therefore, you must right now. Everybody say right now. Right now. Does that give me an option to wait till later? Does that give me an option for um, excuses? Well, yeah, but. There's no yeah, buts. You must right now put to death the earthly parts which are immorality, unclean, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idol worship, because of which the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of the disobedient, among whom you also once walked. 
you don't walk that way anymore because you're dead. You're dead, so you don't walk that way. But now you must e- immediately put everything off from yourself. Immediately. Like you have no excuse to be in anger, passion, wickedness, depravity, malice, blasphemy, slander, evil, obscene, abusive speech from your mouth. That's tough right there. You think about what evil, abusive speech is from your mouth. And it's not okay. You can't do that. You died. You can't do that. Now you do do that. I do that. Because why? I'm trying to breathe life into something that's dead. Can't do it. Jesus paid too much for him to die. That's good. That's really good. Um, you must not ever lie to one another. Who's ever, who in here has ever lied to a Christian brother or sister? Uh-huh. Yeah. Not cool, is it? No. What's that show? I'm not grown up. I'm not dead. I'm still trying to breathe life into something that I can't pay for. Uh, You heard me. I'm trying to breathe life into something I can't pay for. (laughs) Jesus paid for me to die. I can never, ever come up with enough anything to make that thing come back that's why do you ever notice like when you make a decision in the flesh you feel this thing inside you that's like that's because you're trying to buy something you can't buy Uh uh-uh i owe him nothing (laughs) but to what die so he can live and when he lives through me it's crazy like i get to live the way paul lived Better yet, I get to live the way Jesus lived. Because it's not me living, it's him living. You see how easy he is? Like, it's got nothing to do with you. You die, he lives. Y'all getting me all mixed up here. You must not ever lie to one another. Since, like, this is Paul saying, he's like putting us on blast. Y'all catch what I mean there? Putting you on blast, putting you on, uh, throwing you under the bus. Thank you, Gerald. Throwing you under the bus. Saying, you said, listen, listen to what he says here. Since you stripped off the old man with his deeds. Since I died with Christ, I cannot have any of that stuff above there. And why would I want it? Who likes being angry? Who likes being depressed? Who likes being addicted? No. Me too, like so much. Okay. Since you stripped off the old man with his deeds, and by putting on your new self, which is being renewed in knowledge. So check this out. My old man died like the old man never got anything better, right? Did your old man ever do anything better? Mostly just stayed the same, right? Would you all agree with me? But look what Jesus, look what Jesus did. He says, by putting on your new self, which is being renewed, I'm constantly get to learn more and more and more and more about him. Like you're never going to, you can't reach the end of him. That's good news. Like I can run and I'm in him and I'm running and I'm running and I'm never going to make it to the end. But it doesn't matter because like, yeah, yeah. Being renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created the universe. Whew. Okay. So let's let's just go through this real quick. Let's go through this. There we go. Okay. So anytime you act in this stuff... I want you guys, we're going to do some checking tonight. I'm going to check myself tonight. Josh, are you ever in anger? Yes. Are you ever in passion? Yes. Are you ever in wickedness? Yeah. Are you ever in depravity? Yeah. Malice? I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to be honest. So, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I've, I've been mean. Like, there's a couple guys at work that drive me crazy, and I'm mean to them. I'm mean to them. I'm just admitting, I'm being real. I'm not going to fake you guys out. I'm being real. 
but I get convicted when I'm mean. And then that thing inside of me rises up like, why are you trying to buy something you can't afford? And then I'm like, mm, you're right. I want to love them. And then I go to love them and they're, but I'm getting there. I'm like Paul. I'm not saying I've reached the mark, but I'm running. Sometimes I run right into love them guys. Not, I want to run into them. Slander. Not so much. Evil. Not so much. Obscene, abusive speech. Yeah. Lying. Yeah, I lie sometimes. Like, check this out. Can I just tell a real story? This is off. So I caught myself like, I like food a lot, as you guys can tell. But uh, so one night, me and my wife were going to have hot wings. And uh, we were going to order 24 hot wings. Yeah, 24 of them. And I was like, well, babe, what do you think about getting a sandwich to go with our wings? And she's like, how many wings can you eat? And I was like, you need to stop judging me right then, you know, like that's not okay. I can put down some wings. I'm thinking I'll eat all 24 to myself, but she was thinking otherwise. So anyways, I said, okay, 24 wings will get us. And guess who's going to go get the wings? I'm not stupid. So I went to get the wings. I picked the wings up, and I'm driving back. There just happens to be a McDonald's that I felt like maybe I needed to go there for some reason. So I swung in, got me a cheeseburger, throw the wrapper away so nobody knows about it. <laughs> Guess what? I got full that night. But I lied. Because, like, I told her I wasn't going to get a sandwich, but I got a sandwich. It's not cool, but it tasted so good. <laughs> but, it, but it's not about me. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I want to be like Jesus, and I bet Jesus would put 24 hot wings down. I'm just, I think he would. I think he would. Like, doesn't he say there's going to be a feast for us in heaven? Is a feast like eight wings? No, I think there's going to be a plethora of wings and I'm going to be able to eat as many as I want. Y'all with me? Okay. So, uh, immoralities, covetousness. Now, everything I just listed is the nature of, watch this, Satan. Who wants to look like Satan? It got real quiet real quick. But anytime I lie, guess who I'm looking like? Like, it's not cool to call yourself a Christian and treat people bad. Guess what that does? <laughs> but we do it every day. And then explain it off. Like, yeah, but. Yeah, but. Yeah, but they did this. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's really no big deal. Christians do it all the time. I don't care what Christians do all the time. I care what Jesus does all the time. Like, Jesus would never, ever, ever hurt any of us in here. So why should I ever try to hurt anybody in here? Like, even when things are rough and tough, even in the storm, when I'm sleeping, and I've already given you everything you needed to calm a storm, you come wake me up when I've given you everything. What do you do? Oh, come on, guys. You don't have that much faith yet? Be still. I'm going to go back to bed. Like, I think he did that in the most loving way. I don't think he was like the way I just explained it. I don't think that's how it was. I think he did it soft and nice and like, come on, guys. I paid more for you than that. Or I'm, I'm going to pay more for you than that. Like, see, I think we think about too much with our flesh mind and not our righteous mind. Like, if I thought righteously all the time, I thought righteously all the time like when Jesus was preaching I'd just sit there and just cry over the revelation and just Jesus is in me you know what I'm saying Joe <laughs> so I want to represent Jesus like 
when he told me that three weeks or something ago about um, anybody that tells you they're a Christian, you can assume they're just like me. When he told me that, like, my mind was like, that's not true. Because it's not through my eyes, but through his eyes, it is true. Because he only sees you how. <laughs> so, like, that's crazy to me. Like, I don't agree with that. My flesh, okay? Like, that's one of those things where Jesus, like, punched me in the head and was like, you're going to get this. S softly. You know, like, he, check this out. He offended my mind to reveal my heart. Does that make sense? Like, he made me go, that's not right. And he says, well, look at the way I'm looking at it. So if I would look at every Christian the way he looks at them, then, and see why I'm, why I'm talking about Christian on Christian love is because if I can't love you, I can't love anybody out those doors. But see, I've, I've come to a place, I have, and we're all going to have to get to a place where I know how much Jesus loves me. So now I love me because he loves me. Like, I love me a lot, a whole lot. He's got my picture in his wallet, and he shows all the angels like every five minutes. Hey, you guys seen Josh yet? Yeah, about 20 times today. Get used to him. He's my favorite. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I am. And we, we, we went over this earlier as we are all one in Christ, right? So we don't have to argue about who's his favorite. We're all his favorite. You're his favorite. Sometimes like I, when I'm preaching, I get lost in his love. And it's just good. Right? Because faith comes by hearing. So when I'm reading all this, like I'm not hearing it. I'm reading it. But then when revelation comes out, then I hear it. And it's crazy. Like who loves this upside down kingdom we're in? The first will be last. The last will be first. You got to die to live. Um, I'm in you, but you're in me. You're not going to understand that. Like that's good because if I could, I'd mess it up. Right? I have to rest. If I want to be what he calls me to be, I have to rest in him. I have to. And that, that'll set somebody free. Like you don't have to try to be righteous. Who's ever tried? I tried for about a year. And it got so, so hard. Like, you can follow what Jesus tells you to about 80% in your own will. About 80. Yeah, I'd say. Some people, maybe more. Me, I can follow it about 80%. But what's the problem? That's not 100%. But I'll never be able to do it 100% on my own. I can do it 100% if I had a couch and I just rest in the couch of the finished work of the cross. That's good. I like taking naps. I definitely like taking spiritual naps where I don't have to do anything because he's already done it all. All I have to do is call it out and command it. Like, this is going to offend some people's minds, and that's okay because I want you to know the Jesus that's in you. Like, um, let's see here. Try and think of an example. If I was to get diagnosed with stage four cancer tomorrow morning, you know what I'm going to do right after that? I'm going to command it to go. You know who I'm going to tell? Nobody. You know why? Because I've got Jesus in me. Like, I don't have to text Gerald and Scott and Mark and Pastor and three other people, hey, pray for me, pray for me. And I'm not saying that that's bad. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is we do that out of um, <laughs> that and, like, I want you to feel sorry for me. I got cancer. Will you pray for me, brother? I got cancer. Well, first of all, what are you doing there? You're claiming it. Then you're wanting people to feel bad for you. 
Like, why don't you just take the Jesus that's in you, command that thing to go, and then have a testimony. The next time you go back to the doctor, the doctor said, there's no cancer in you. Then you can say, hey, I had cancer. And people are like, why didn't you tell me? Because it doesn't scare me. I didn't need to. But I'm telling you, I did, and now I don't. Like, that's much more freeing than if I would have went and told 20 other people and then got my healing. Like, I'm not saying that's bad. All I'm saying, I want to challenge the Jesus in you. You to use the Jesus in you. Because it does say, go grab your elders and have them pray for you, okay? It does say that. But we want to grab our elders and our friends and 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 that. When we could really just speak out the Jesus in us and command that thing to go. I don't know where that came from. What does Jesus look like? If Jesus was to walk on this earth today, what what would his um, personality be? Love. Love. He would have a heart. He would com- constantly be thinking thoughts of compassion. He would be the most generous man you've ever met. And do it humbly. Like, I know a lot of people that are gener- generous, but they're proudly generous. You know what I mean? <laughs> but Jesus would be so generous, humbly. That's good. He'd be gentle, patient, and he'd bear with you. Like, even when things are, like, even when the storm's raging, and I'm sleeping, and he's sleeping, he'd bear with you. Like, that's Okay. You guys got a little faith, but that's all right. Maybe he was saying, you guys have a little faith. You just need a little more. I don't know. Check that out yourself. Uh, He'd be forgiving, and he'd love, be the most peaceful man, and he'd be grateful. So grateful. Like, yeah. But most importantly, he would love. Because really all that summed up in love. And that's what you're supposed to look like. Like we are all supposed to love. Who likes to love? Who likes to feel love? And who likes to give it? You'd be crazy if you didn't. Like most people, watch this. Alcoholics, drug addicts, and those sorts of people. Like the alcohol's not your problem. Drinking's not your problem. All that's a byproduct of who you are. You with me? So, like it's not bad that they drink. What's bad is what makes them drink. They were hurt. They don't feel love. Even when they walk in these doors. And that's tough. But that's not on anybody but you, me. It's on me. It's my fault they don't feel love when they walk in. Because who's supposed to carry love? Me. Just say me. Yeah. Say me. Now, remember, like, this sounds like bad news, right? It sounds condemning and harsh, and, but it's not. It sets you free because it sets you up to be what I'm telling you you can be. Like, I can be love all the time. I can constantly be love and love, no matter what. No matter what. Like, two years ago, God started talking to me. My biggest fear used to be God's since set me free. But uh, my biggest fear used to be somebody close to me, y'all with me? Dying. Used to be my biggest fear. Somebody close to me, my wife, mom, dad, brother, any of them. That used to scare me. I didn't want that to happen. Because when I was about 13, uh, uh, a guy that I looked up to passed away. And so I blame God. God, why would you take him? Because I heard that in church. I heard that in funerals. Well, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. 
So I had truth to back it up, and that's not right. That's not cool. So anyways, God started speaking to me what happens this time. Because inevitably, somebody close to me is going to, right? It's going to happen. And the last time, like that started my run away from him. I didn't want nothing to do with him. I hardened my heart. and I didn't want nothing to do with it. So God started speaking to me about this about two years ago, and it was tough. Like real tough. Like I would have dreams of death and people dying. And when my wife wouldn't text me back, you know, within the minute, God, what, what if she died? And I wasn't scared of them dying. What I was scared of is my relationship with him. Because most people, when the going gets tough, they get going. And I don't want to be that way. So God started speaking to me about what happens. And uh, he began the Colossians 3, 1. Therefore, if you are uh, now raised with Christ, you are seeking the higher things. He brought that to me. Is there death in heaven? So if my eyes are on him and somebody down here dies, guess where I get to see him now? Like I, I seen him, but I didn't see him. You know what I'm saying? But when they died and they go, now I get to see him. So God told me, Josh, what I want from you is if that ever happened, say, died tomorrow. I don't want you guys to, like, say, died tomorrow, and Megan, you see me tomorrow. I don't want you to know that she did. I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be like that. Because that's how everybody is, Right? but I want to shine a light in a very dark place. Like, wouldn't that be the greatest miracle to see a father who just lost his three-year-old daughter not crying, but shedding light and love on everyone at the funeral? That would mess some people up. How will I ever make it to that place if when I get offended, I take on hurt and I can't shine light in that? It's not going to happen. But Jesus called me to shine light everywhere. (laughs) No excuses. And don't think, like in God, I've been placed in areas that hurts and people hurt me. And it was tough for me to learn, like, God, why are you putting me through this? (laughs) He wasn't putting me through this. I was having the chance to go through darkness and shine light. I was having the chance to be persecuted and be blessed. And God so shined that on my life, like within the past three weeks. He's saying, why do you feel bad for being persecuted? I told you you're blessed when you're persecuted. That's good. That's really, matter of fact, let's, I can't say that without, you guys have to hear this. You have to hear this. I'm going to Matthew 5. Yeah. The do attitudes, right? (laughs) Be. I be to do. I don't do to be. I'm not a preacher. I'm a son. And out of my sonship, he gives me the privilege to shed revelation on his word to you guys. Anybody getting anything? Are we good? Like somebody getting set free? Anybody free? Good. Good. I love that. Okay. 5-3. Blessed are the repentant because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble because they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled and satisfied. Blessed are those, now check this out. This is verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I hunger and thirst for righteousness. Because if I don't, I'll never make it to the place that I want to be. When tragedy strikes, I want to shine light in tragedy. That's righteousness. 
Like my righteousness won't change when tragedy strikes. What will change is the tragedy around me. Oh, come! that is good. That's good. That's good. I, and I know that's a... Like some people don't want to think about that stuff. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled and satisfied. Blessed are those who forgive because they will be forgiven. Blessed are the pure in heart because they will see God. I want to be so pure. So pure. Blessed are the peacemakers because they will be called children of God. Go to the next one, would you, 10? There it is. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What verse 6 say? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So the very thing that I've hungered and thirsted for is now going to get me persecuted. But I'm blessed for it. Like, do you guys know what persecution is? Persecution hurts really bad in the flesh. Like, it hurts bad. And if you're persecuted without having your mind stayed on Him, you're going to get hurt. But if you're persecuted with your mind on Him, you're going to be blessed. Are y'all following me? Now, I'm still blessed when I got hurt in my flesh because I did get hurt in my flesh when I was persecuted. Because I was persecuted for righteousness' sake. But I felt it in my flesh. I wasn't keeping my eyes on Him. What's the blessing out of this? He gave me grace to come till now and recognize that I was being persecuted and now I'm blessed for it because the next time I get persecuted, guess what? I can take it with a smile. My persecutor will see Jesus' face. When you look at me, you will see the truth. Like you have no... You can't be a dead man around me because I'm going to call you up higher because that's what Jesus would do. Yes or no? Jesus calls the dead to life. <laughs> Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness' sake. Blessed are those who persecuted for the very thing they hungered and thirsted for. Because now, guess what? Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What's the kingdom of heaven? Woo! Yeah, just Jesus. I mean, don't make things harder than they are. It's Him. He is the kingdom. Like, don't try to complicate Jesus. He's easy. He's simple. He's so simple. What? Didn't He say that? My burden is, and my yoke is, He's light and easy. Whew, that's a lot. My head's spinning still. And I've been in this for about a year and a half now, and I'm still like, I'm going to get there. He paid a high price for me to be him. 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 Like, could you guys imagine what the church would look like if we represented him the way he represented himself? I'll show you. Acts 9.22. Y'all collecting all these verses going together for you good? I hope so. Like, I'm not a really good preacher, but I'm a good listener. And I can hold my mouth open long enough for Jesus to come through. <laughs> That's good, ain't it? <laughs> That'll set a preacher free. You know what's even better? Like, I didn't even have to study for tonight. Because it's in me. Like, I don't have to study for another message just because this is who I am. It, this is really all I know. Ask my wife. This is all I know, isn't it? Like, I know nothing else. I can't be anything but this. There's times that I am, but I'm not. That'll mess you up. Remember, upside down kingdom. Upside down. Like even when I act outside of it, I talk to my flesh. Flesh, you better get right. You're righteous. You ain't like that. You don't eat cheeseburgers and don't tell people about it. That's not okay. It's not. God's going to set me free from food. Because I love him more than food. That's silly, but it's, it's true. Where are we going? Oh, yeah, Saul. Okay. 
So this is like the story of Saul on the road to Damascus. Okay? And this is what the church should look like. Okay? So after you become, after your old man dies, matter of fact, right now, God, right now, I thank you that you're sending a knife to slit the throat of every dead man in here. Now, that sounds harsh, (laughs) but that's good. That's truth. Like, I want your old man to die so you can live his life. You die, and you be raised with him. God, I thank you right now that people are being raised with you right now. All over this room, people are being raised with you. They don't even realize it, Jesus, but I command life to come forth, and I command you to be who Jesus paid you to be. I can do that because, check this out, you were made out of dust, right? Dirt. And then God gave me dominion over the earth. Dirt comes from the earth. I lost it. Jesus paid a price. I got my dominion back, so now I get to have dominion over. So I can command you to be who Jesus called you to be. That's really good. Like, even if you don't want to be a Christian, I command you to be. (laughs) You will be saved. Check this out. Do you want to be forced to bow your knee, or do you want to bow it yourself? Because everybody's going to. If I would bow it now and let everybody see me lifting him up, then all men would be drawn unto him. I don't know, like, here we go. Can I just read the whole story? Okay. This, this may take a second. I mean, that's a. If y'all get done before I do, y'all can go. You won't hurt me. Here we go. And Saul still breathing. Check this out. Check how awesome Jesus is. And Saul still breathing threat and murder among the disciples of the Lord when he went to the high priest, asked from the letters to the synagogues in Damascus to end that, to end to the end that if he would find any who were of the way, both men and women, he would lead them bound to Jerusalem. And it happened while he was going as he drew near to Damascus, a light, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the or life. He is the light. I mean, God's good. He's the light. So a light from heavenly suddenly shone around him. And as he fell to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Check this out. As soon as he heard Jesus's voice, look what he did. Like people skip over this all the time, but check out what Saul does. And he said, who are you? Lord? I don't think he said, who are you, Lord? I think he said, who are you, Lord? Like, uh (laughs) uh-oh, you're my Lord. I think that's where the change came. And he said, I am. That's good right there. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but you must now rise and enter the city. Remember I was just speaking about persecution? You see what Jesus did to his persecutor? Encountered him. Like he didn't shy away from him and say, I'm not going to talk to you because you're mean to me. Jesus said, no. You're the one persecuting me? Here I am. Truth, light, right in his face. What are you going to do? Who are you? Lord? Where are we at? Here we are. But you must now rise and enter the city, and it will be told to you what is necessary for you to do. And the men traveling with him had stood speechless. Jesus is so good. Like, not only did he affect Paul, Saul, but he affected everyone around him. Hearing the voice on the one hand, but on the other hand, not seeing anyone. Then Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was not seeing anything. I think he was so blinded by the light. That's just me. I shouldn't even said that, but y'all read it yourself. See what God tells you. Uh, when he opened his eyes, he was not seeing anything. And taking him by the hand, they were leading him to Damascus. And he was without sight three days, and he was neither eating nor drinking. That is an experience. Like, 
after you have one of those, your life won't be the same. And I don't think you'll ever go back to what you were. And there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. Then the Lord said to him, When you get up, you must be going to the street called Straight, and you must at once seek in the house of Judas someone named Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. Miracle. And he saw in a vision a man named Ananias. <laughs> Miracle. Who had entered, who had entered, and after he laid his hands on him, then he would regain his sight. Miracle. Y'all see the three miracles? Paul was praying. That's a miracle. Paul was seeing visions. That's a miracle. Then his eyes got set free. Miracle. But Ananias answered. Check this out. Fear of man enters right here. Lord, I have heard from many about this man who did evil to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the high priest to bind all those who call on your name. Then the Lord said to him, you must be going because this one is a chosen vessel for me. Can I? Yeah, I'm going to. I don't care what y'all say. Um. I do care what you say, if it's Jesus coming out of you. But if it's you, I don't. Anyway, sorry. Let me read this one more time. You must be going because this one is a chosen vessel for me. Like, what if the person you just walked by in the mall, Holy Spirit told you, you need to tell them that I love them, and you said, that's just me thinking. That one's a chosen vessel. And guess what you just did? Let a chosen vessel walk by because you're scared of what they'll say about you. You don't want to interrupt them because they're just shopping at the mall and you have respect for them, right? We respect people's space, right? Right? God told me the other day you're going to respect them right into hell. You're welcome. You must be going because this one is a chosen vessel for me to carry my name before the heathens and even kings and children of Israel. For I shall show him how much it is necessary for him to suffer on my behalf of my name. Then Ananias left and see, Ananias realized I've got to go do this because Saul needs to know who he is. I've got to tell him he's chosen. Ananias, Ananias left and entered the house, and when he placed his hands on him, said, Saul, brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus, the one who set upon you on the way while you were coming so that you would regain your sight, and you would be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell away from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight. And then when he got up, he was baptized. And when he took food, he regained his strength. Super awesome story, right? Like, there hasn't been too many conversions like that since then, right? I mean, there's been some, but not a bunch. There's going to be a big one tonight, because like, Jesus is good. And he was with the disciples in Damascus some days, and right away, he preached Jesus in the synagogues that he was the Son of God. Like, Saul didn't wait for somebody to anoint him. Saul didn't wait for somebody to say, you can go preach now. What did he do? He went immediately. I know what just happened to me. You need to feel. You need to see Jesus. And all those who heard were amazed and were saying, Is this not the one who devastated those who called on his name in Jerusalem? And has he not come here for this, so that after he bound them, he could lead them to the high priest? Verse 22 is where the church has to get to today. This is where we have to begin to represent who Jesus is because watch what happens. And Saul was becoming stronger and baffled the Jewish people living in Damascus by proving that Jesus was Messiah. Not too many people in the church today prove that Jesus is who we say he is by the life you live. Remember, Good news. That means I get another chance to prove who Jesus is by the life I live. Listen to what it says. Saul was becoming stronger and baffled the Jewish people. How do you do that? By proving who Jesus is. How do I prove who Jesus is? 
put my money where my mouth is. If I say he'll set you free, he's going to set you free. If I say he's a God who will heal, he's going to heal you. If I say he's a God that loves you, you're going to feel his love. But you won't feel his love unless I've felt his love. Does that, y'all with me? I, the Jesus I know is the Jesus I show. Like there's too much living like this and not enough living like this. Because that's what happened to Saul. Saul was becoming stronger and baffled the Jewish people by living, or living in Damascus by proving that Jesus was Messiah. It's time for the church to get back to Matthew 5. Be salty. Be a light on a hill. And prove who Jesus is. And you do that by Colossians 3, 1 through 10. I die to self. I keep my mind stayed on Jesus. And I only live the way he tells me to live. At all cost. No matter what. Like... Jesus sent me here tonight to tell you, you have no excuses. I paid for those. Jesus paid for all your excuses. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be depressed, hurt, mad, sad. You can live his life. You can be perfect. I did just say that. You, 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 all of us can be perfect. The only way you're not going to be perfect is if you try to do it in your own strength and try to do it living a dead man's mentality. If I have the mind of Christ and if I live his life, how did he live? Perfect. How did his mind think? Perfect. You got no excuses. That's all y'all get for tonight. That's it. Take that and grow. Like, God told me tonight I would be able to see a bunch of empty fields plowed. Do you think it feels good for a field to get plowed? No. I'm sure it hurts. He said I would, be, I would be able to see fields be plowed, which I just did. Truth planted, which he just did. And then we get to see the fruit. So I call forth fruit in your life. This next week, you should be a different person. Am I saying that you are miraculously a new person now? No. I'm saying the next time somebody makes you mad, you have the choice to act as the old man or the choice to act as Jesus. And when you act as the old man, you're saying, no, Jesus, I have enough to pay for what you already paid for, and you don't. You don't. We can live this crazy, awesome life that Jesus called us to live for. Like, if we want to see sons and daughters come to him, it's easy if we live his life. Pastor, church politics are tough, but if we live his life, it's easy. Check this out. (laughs) Sometimes I want to say stuff, and he's like, "Mm -hmm. don't you do that but I want to. It's truth, but I'm not. It's truth that has to come in love, like one-on-one. You know what I'm saying? Some stuff you just can't project. Some stuff I've got to show. With me? Like I give you all permission to put my life on blast. Y'all, y'all understand what I say when I say on blast. Okay, that means that my life is in a spotlight. You can pick this thing apart any way you want. That's what on blast means. Joe's with me. (laughs) My life is in a spotlight. You see me doing something outside of Jesus, you come tell me. And guess what? You're not going to hurt me. That should be everybody. We should all be holding each other higher. Like that will make pastor's job way easier you know if we all were real Christians pastor's job wouldn't be hard at all because it'd be a bunch of Jesuses running around (laughs) 
Stuff gets tough when you live your own life. Stuff is easy when you live his life. I keep my eyes on him. I have no excuse. I'm going to live his life. Matthew 5, Acts 9, Colossians 3, the New Testament, the Old, just read it all with an open mind. God, I love you so much. I thank you for freedom in this house, Jesus. God, I thank you for the miracles that you've done as you've spoken your word. God, I thank you for the testimonies that will come forth out of tonight, Jesus. I thank you that your gospel is true. And I thank you for fruit, Jesus. I thank you that you're watering this body right now. And that the only thing that will come out on the other side of this is you, Jesus. We love you so much. Amen.